Hi everybody, my name's Lee Hanish. Welcome to Fight Net Radio. This week we recorded for three hours this Sunday morning, uh, and we've decided it's so much content that we could give you one very long episode that you can listen to off and on all week. But there's basically like three different sections of the show. So this is our Triple G Canelo trilogy fanboy moment because there's a lot of stories about that and it's mostly about Canelo like losing his shit and Triple G poking the bear so we've decided to give you three episodes this week we'll parse them out all week long so the first thing I want to tell you this first episode is uh, about a quote that Canelo made that actually I think he told TV Boxeo he said uh, Triple G is a fucking asshole and I hate him, or something roughly to that effect. Uh, but you'll see it in the title or the description or whatever it is. Uh, then in the second part, there is a whole clambuterol rant that goes on for way too long and awkwardly, um, which kind of leads to the title of Eddie Reynoso should smell... <laughs> and I don't know how Andrew got here. Uh, the second part is... Uh, Eddie Reynoso should smell Canelo's shit, which was hilarious. And then in the third part, King Rye, who fought this past weekend, is a prospect, which might be the greatest Andrew Slam of all time. So those are your three parts. I'll put them out probably. You get this one, which covers Monday. Usually we try to get them out by Monday morning. So uh, you'll have this one on Monday. I'll turn around and probably do the next one on Tuesday and the following one on Tuesday. Wednesday. Please share these. Please let other people know. If you want to go actually watch the video of me working with the boys and trying to put this together, you can go see it. This is going to be the same intro on the beginning of each one of these three, but look in the title and make sure you got the right one. There will be part one, part two, part three. Enjoy the trilogy of Canelo and Triple G, and we will see you guys next Sunday. Let's speed this up a little bit. Mikey Garcia on retirement. What? When did you retire? I didn't get the memo. Andrew, did you get the memo? Nobody cares about Mikey Garcia. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, Mikey's okay with his career, so I'm I'm glad he's happy with his career. But there's a lot of Mikey fans that are not happy with Mikey Garcia. Mikey Garcia was so fucking hot when he first, and I don't mean physically. I mean hot as in a fighter, as, as where his momentum was in the sport. This guy was supposed to fight Terrence Crawford. He was supposed to fight, wasn't it Manny Pacquiao? Oh I yeah, he's rumored to fight everybody. Once. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was. He, they had these huge names for him. He turns down. He turns down. He, he's his career goes into a shambles over there with the fucking PBC and taking him to the welterweights. It's a, a very, very uh, lackluster uh, career for for a Mikey devoted fan who thought this guy was the next fucking Fernando Vargas, Oscar De La Hoya, all of those dudes out of Southern California. He turned out to be none of them. I'm glad you're happy with your career. I'm not. Miguel, did you even know he retired? Uh, I, I did because I am one of those bitter fans that uh, that Andrew's yeah. talking about. Because like I was, not, I was totally expecting him to, you know, like we all held our breath for a potential fight with Lomachenko, maybe even yeah. Manny Pacquiao. You know, these fights that it just missed out on. It's like, what the fuck? He went Terrence over to the Crawford, TV. bro. Terrence Crawford, yeah. yeah. It's just like, God damn it, these, what happened? And God he's damn it. just like, good enough to make I it saw, twelve rounds with everybody. He's a great. Damn beating bag i mean he uh, he, he goes you know and he fights he moves up to 147 <laughs> which we all knew from the jump going to 147 was a bad fucking idea but for the payday okay he did it you know with with spence and he basically got schooled you know what i'm saying so it's like all right move back down to 140 probably you know he has back when he was like a lot smaller like at 126 he was having a hard time like keeping the weight and there was a few times where like post uh weigh-ins he would puke and shit like that right so i he i kind of seems like he always had a problem with weight so going back down to 140 after going to 147 seemed a little bit of a stretch okay fine you're gonna stay 147 he has a couple of fights there you know and then he loses to this fucking the spanish uh spanish, journey yeah. dude, it's, it's just like what the fuck man is you know go back down to 140 and get your shit straight and fight fight some big motherfuckers because i'm sure there's plenty of names at 140 he can fight but it, it, once he went over to like the uh the zone i think it was uh i forgot when he fought uh jesse uh jesse vargas 
and it's like he got a major payday there, right? Uh, in addition to the fight with uh, uh, with Spence, so it's like, man, he saw those zeros, and you know, just looking at his fucking Instagram, you know, uh, uh, account, you know, he has these like funny recorded scenes of him and some sort of like a narc or something like that. Like I forget what the hell it is, but he's got some like he's part. I don't know if he was like shooting some music video or some bullshit, but clearly money is coming in from another angle, right? That isn't necessarily boxing, and he's like, fuck it, I'm done getting my ass handed to me. I'm gonna call it quits. It's like, dude, you can't go out like that. You fought this Spanish dude and you lost what you did. Don't go out like that. I'm hoping, yes, I do hope that he comes back for at least one more fucking major payday and he ends up winning and he can end his career because, yes, I am not satisfied the way he ended his career. It, it sucks. I, I hope he is. You know, it sounds like he is, right? From He says he's happy with everything he's accomplished, but come the fuck on, bro. Like, there was a lot more that you could have done. Well, if Mikey needs suggestions, I am a marketing guy at the end of the day. Mikey, give me a call. Um, I'm thinking OnlyFans, gay porn with midgets. Just putting it out there. There's good money in it, bro. Good money in it. Moving forward. George Foreman denies sexual allegations. Like, Does his dick work huh? at that age? Claims he is being extorted. Really? Over the past six months, two women have been trying to extort millions of dollars, each from me and my family. They are falsely claiming that I sexually abused them over 45 years ago in the <laughs> 70s. I adamantly and categorically deny these allegations. Somebody wrote this for you. You don't talk like this, George. Mm -hmm. The pride I take in my reputation means... Oh, my God, this was written by your lawyer. Uh, reputation means much more to me as my sport accomplishments and my grill. Um, <laughs> you're not getting it in my grill money, bitch. Um, and I will not be intimidated by baseless threats and lies. I am and always will be. Well, with the commas correct, impressive lawyer, uh, guided by my faith and trust in God. Oh, you even got God in there. I will work with my lawyers to fully and truthfully expose my accuser's schemes and defend myself in court. I don't pick fights, but I don't run away from them either. All right. So for those of you who don't know the real George Foreman, and this is accounted for by everybody, and, and then I'll throw it over to you, Miguel. George Foreman in the 70s was a straight up prick of a human being. Um, and basically everybody has said, you're watching a TV version of Foreman. Like when he's not here, this is not how he behaves. He's an asshole. He's still the same asshole. He never grew out of his assholeness. And there have been lots of reports and accounts of that. Uh, my question is, I don't want to go out on a limb. You're just playing the card that had happened in the seventies. I completely believe that version of George Foreman could have easily have assaulted women. Now, it is literally a hundred years later, um, and they are definitely coming after your grill cash. Uh, one, I guess the question is, would you put it past George? Number two, it's been like 40 years. I mean, why now? What'd you wait for? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know, I, uh, when when he retired the the first time, uh, I think he became like an evangelist or some shit like that. And you know, granted, it's it's he's a man of the church, but I mean, we all know that that isn't exactly mean jack shit now. So I I wouldn't put it past him if something did go down, of course. Um, but he is nonetheless the way it should be. Innocent until proven guilty, not the other fucking way around. And how they're gonna come up with some sort of evidence from them? I, I just, you know, I just hope this doesn't become another fucking, evidence? you know, hashtag me too kind of bullshit. You know, it's like, look, do it then, don't do it now. Like, I, I realize there's no statute of limitations on them shits, and that that's kind of a problem because people, you know, how the hell are you gonna really come up with some sort of evidence from the '70s? Like, hey, uh, you gotta prove to us that you didn't do it. Like, how the fuck does that? Uh, no, it's the way around, dumbass. Like, they they're making the claim. They have oh, to no, prove you that they did do it. He's gonna. Yeah. You're gonna need DNA evidence on a dress it's, that was only manufactured in the yeah, '70s. Yeah, it's just like what the hell. But I mean, yes, it's they, they might. They should have come to come at him probably when his grill first exploded, not now. But I mean, at this point, I, I maybe they just think the guy is like running out of money and he doesn't have the kind of money to like you know fight necessarily. But he's got enough money to at least pay them off and keep them quiet. I, I don't know if that's like the case or not. But I mean, really, this many fucking years later, and let's let's worst case scenario, let's just say it did fucking happen. What the the fuck took so long that's one of the biggest issues what the oh fuck God, took so long yeah, don't tell me it in the article the don't time tell me period you were talking about, you're talking yeah. about ollie foreman like he don't, had money yeah should have came at him right me. there exactly don't not tell me you were fucking scared of that nobody would have believed you don't don't give me that bullshit everybody would take your fucking side in a second as soon as people or women in particular have these false as as mike tyson got found guilty yeah. yeah everybody that, jumped that's another good moment side. to go after the other heavyweight champ 
Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, come come the fuck on. At this point, it just seems like people are really grasping at straws here. But I, I hope everything comes out, you know, that Georgia is legit and didn't actually do this, of course, for everybody involved. And, you know, the person who are making these fucking false claims gets some serious punishment for it. But, I mean, uh, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, but to answer the first question, at the time, uh, I wouldn't put it past them. You know, who the fuck knows? Andrew? Um. Well, the family story that I have about George Foreman was when he was living in Hayward, training in Hayward, California. My grandfather took uh, both of my uncles to go watch him. One of my my young my the younger brother, my uncle Richard, pushed my older uncle Junior into George Foreman as he was walking by. George gave him, I guess, a, a dirty look, and then took him outside and and gave him a bunch of gear, pictures, and everything from his car. So very cool man, very cool story from uh, my family's side uh, with knowing him or meeting him. So I have nothing bad to say. I think if you look at George Foreman's career, well, yes, he was a little bit – he looked a little moody back in the day. <laughs> um, he turned out to be a big teddy bear. Uh, now, I don't know if that was, you know, after he found God or, or maybe just when you got to know George Foreman, he wasn't the guy that he was showing you on camera. Who really knows? This is why you should be innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to – I don't know if George did it or if he didn't do it, and I'm not going to say I think he did because – he should be innocent until these ladies can prove that he actually assaulted them. Um, I, I am in an ag agreement. If, you know, this happened in the 70s and we're in 2022. Good Lord. Um, you know, there, I, you there know, has I'm to sure, be some kind of I'm sure these ladies limitation whipped it out on, on Don shit. King and tried to, tried to get Don to pay it up. Like, I would love to hear that. No, we approached Don King and told him what was going on. What was his response? I, I mean, literally. We're going to throw you in a trunk and take you to the desert. Literally, I mean. Do, do you have to have I, I would love to see what evidence they can even show. Like, is there a photo? Oh, no, we showing need a Monica Lewinsky room? dress. This requires yeah. the Lewinsky dress. You know, because because you would think if this if this is if you're capable of just accusing someone to try to get money from them, you know, anyone well, with a common are. last name, that's, any that's, girl with a common last name, like your yeah. name could be yeah. Hernandez, you know, yeah. what I mean, Garcia or something. And they're like, oh, yeah, you met her. You know, I remember the Garcia girl. Like, you know how many Garcias these, these boxers meet? Or I don't know what George's name would be with the girls that he's hanging around with. I don't know who he prefers. But you understand what I'm saying. Anyone with a common yeah. name, he might be like, oh, yeah, I do remember a girl named that when it's not the same girl. So I, I just got to know what kind of proof that these girls have. Now, if they have fucking cameras of them on his lap and <laughs> and one of them looks scared and all that, well, then George might be in some trouble. You're going to have to at least go through a court case. But if they don't have anything like that, I, I think this is just a – a uh, ransom that George said, fuck it. Or is it ransom or blue? What is the, it's when you try to mail. It's not blackmail? Ransom. There you go. I was going to say blue mail. What an asshole. Blackmail. This is going to be a blackmail situation where George said, fuck it. Take it to the public. I didn't do it. Well, that's the thing, though. Like, people have been, uh, like, their lives have been destroyed by false allegations. That's the shitty part. Like, people that's do bad. immediately, you know what I'm saying? So this, we don't know if this is false or not. We don't know that yet. Oh, I'm but, sure. But, like, that, I could the problem. completely like, see the them approaching. Can. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and this is just people that we know that have money to defend themselves. Like, how many people haven't? There's been people that have been on the hook for fucking child support that didn't even fuck, like, weren't even in the person's life. Like they put this dude's name on the birth certificate and then put them on the fucking, you know, something damn. that simple. It's like, God damn, what the fuck? Like it, the fact that someone's word, specifically a woman's word, just like that is taken as like truth is scary as shit. So I'm hoping I mean, we saw it recently with uh, with Rolo Romero, right? Rolo Romero was accused of something. Eventually he was acquitted of everything. But that in itself totally derailed everything he ended up fighting tank at a later time thankfully the fight happened anyway but just look at that how false allegations can fucking throw your life for a goddamn loop it's really bad i'm hoping george i mean if if it didn't happen i'm hoping george you know comes out of this clean no yeah. there you go moving forward let's try to get this done hmm. uh cornflake lamana returns uh on august 20th in atlantic city after battling depression it's not about cornflake it's a comment <laughs> about people using depression as an excuse, as somebody, I, I suffer from depression, uh, if you don't know. Uh, I have taken medication in the past. I've done therapy. It's never kept me from doing shit. Like, I can't, I'm just going to be a shitbag about this. Every time somebody uses depression as the reason they're not fighting or shit's going on, I think it lowers the cause for depression. Depressed people don't do shit. I completely get it. But you can also muscle through it. That's your, that, that segment. Was brought to you by Lee, there's a, there's a new type. 
Go ahead, There's Edward. a new type of depression, though, that's also coming towards these uh, celebrities because of social media, right? These these guys are getting Oh, it's eaten trendy alive. to be depressed right now. And it's also, I think it's also, they're way too connected into social media. They're reading so much negative shit. About, I mean, some of these people, like, you suck. You know, I'll never, yeah. I wish you fucking died. You know, just the shit. You look dead in the ring when the guy hit you. Like, it, it's a... Uh, they're very cruel out there, and these young men are reading way too much of this shit. And I, and maybe women too, but you know, I typically only follow the the men's sports more, so I've I've seen it. It's, where it's very grating. That- I mean, I spend five days a week going through nothing but content online for my day job, right? Like I'll spend four or five straight days and hours and hours. And trust me, people say a lot of evil shit to me. Look Look at what Khan went through when he made the one tweet about his wife and Anthony Joshua. Fucking babies coming with different faces on them. Lee Honish drilled them for fucking, I don't know, the next 10 years. Oh, I was on that forever. <laughs> yeah. My favorite thing Just, ever, ever. It, it's, uh, uh no, I, I think depression, I think depression because of social media is a real thing right now for some of these celebrities. They're way way too in trying to be it's that. Hard. The, the and it takes me like three days of when you're like, not. Watching well, mindless well, we, shit. Well, you to have calm to like, down. you really have to grow thick skin if you're going to be in that, you know. And yeah. there, and it's yeah, just some some people just can't, unfortunately, you know. But that's just one of the circumstances of being a public figure that you're going to have to be. I mean, you're going to have as realistically, if you don't have haters, clearly you're doing something wrong. You should you should have haters. Everybody, you can't please fucking everybody, right? So it's going to be plenty of haters. But when you pay too much attention to those and you really let them shits really get in your head, it will really fuck you up like hardcore. So I mean, if you don't have the thick skin, it's it's a tough position to be in when you listen to every single thing every single negative comment that they post about you it's hard or, or then how about this one too you guys here you have a young man lamana he's got a social i actually have him on my facebook uh, account he posts all about this fight all of his friends and family maybe thousands are on his list right posting oh i've got a fight big fight gotta watch this fight big fight huge fight the fight happens he gets knocked out what was it the first or second round did you guys see the laura the Lara uh, loss that he took in his, one of his last yeah, it, it's super early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really early. Yeah, it was really early, and it's a, it's a bad knockout, man. It's one of those knockouts where you question if he should even be fighting again. Because um, he was depressed, Andrew. You don't know no, me, li- Lee. That's Listen, he, you don't know there, me. Though. I was depressed yeah. in that fight. Hey, be back in the day, Lee. When you promoted your fight, your friends and family didn't hear the shit every fucking day. Now with social media. He's able to share that shit every single day because his ego is way up here. Oh, I'm going to win every, every day. Share, 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 share. The fight happens. You almost lose your fucking head, right? I was depressed. Now everyone's Get writing right. bad shit about you. You're All you're thinking about is how many people you told to watch that fight every fucking day. No, I think that can wear on you. I really do. It, there, there is something Look, to it. It, it's it not wears just, on me. I get lots of angry... like. I say things that are controversial, even when I'm doing the day job. But we're, I know we're talking. All right. And the amount of shit when you get, no, it's hard. It's hard. I know. It really is hard, but I, you know, you can decompress. There are people to talk to, but coming out of a fight where you got your ass handed to you going, it was depression. What? Yeah. I didn't really have a good camp and I just wasn't feeling it that night. Okay, bro. That's fucking bullshit, but all right. I mean, you want to send that one down the river. And that's the one you're going to. I just think it lowers the battle for depression. And I think depression is super trendy as an excuse right now. It is really. Or, you, or you can raise the bar about awareness on the social media. How about that one? You know, you could also have the you flip could, side. You literally can go the other direction. OK. I would totally be into um, Chavez Jr. I, I you fishing. know what I say? I've always said this. Kids should not be on social media. If you have a kid athlete, he should not be a star on social media before he's a star in whatever sport you're fucking putting him into. That's not how this is. That's my baby. I don't know what you're talking about, Andrew. I couldn't get him to be a runway model, so of course I'm (laughs) going to pop him on social media. I've been taking pictures of my baby since he was two. Uh, you know what I'm saying, though. They, you they should already shit, be they doing shit, the work for Junior right now. Like you should Holly be all Romero over that. You have mm-hmm. fucking a champion. How are you right. not letting me all over the PR for Junior already? So by the time he gets to his first fight, yeah, I know. Yeah, right? there's not too much hype on the fight, kid. You're, you're just fighting at Staples. I mean, it'll be okay. 
<laughs> what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it'll be okay. Well, who am I fighting? Yeah, I know. You know, that's the fun part of this. You're fighting Adrian Broner. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Count Naki def uh, defeats the Hellenus was a life lesson. I'm coming back stronger. Are, are you? Because this sounds like really stupid Polish Polak logic. Like, you got beat by nobody, bro. I'm not saying that Hellenius didn't have skill. I'm just telling you he was a nobody and it fucked your career pretty much straight up. You were on a fast track. Tell me I'm this, wrong, this Miguel. This is for our 10 Polak listeners that listen in Chicago. Uh... <laughs> Shout out Come to on. Polaks. The Can't last eat. people you can make fun of and say derogatory things about and not get retweeted 12,000 times. Uh, Miguel, <laughs> is this dumb Polak logic? Because he got beat by nobody. Uh, and it was twice. So twice he did get his ass handed to him twice by by yeah Helena. Helena it was so, a life lesson. I mean, it and was I life had depression. Lessons. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I hope you come back stronger. Okay, cool. I'm down with that. You know, come back stronger and make sure that you you know become another opponent for somebody else. Um, you know, call, call it a day. Let it go. You know, don't what don't pull out don't pull out the fucking oh. you know Ortiz. Like, oh yeah, I'll fight him ten, ten times. Yeah, that'll work. Like, no, that's, that's not how it works, bro. I'm gonna fight Helene. It's like you got to get ten times twice. Ten, the second times. time it was worse. Uh, but hey, you know what? Come back stronger. Fantastic. And try to make a name. Get back on track. Get back on the horse. Don't let those losses, you know, deter you. And, and keep a good, keep cracking. Fuck it. I'm down with that because he's an exciting fighter. He does put on some exciting fights. Yes, he does get his ass handed to him sometimes. But you know, you put him on free TV, like people will watch. And as I mean, as long as you know who the fuck he is, of course. But get him some exposure and get put him up against another guy who lets his hands go. And it's it's he puts on a very entertaining fight so hey come back stronger i'm down polish heavyweight i mean there's yeah. got to be a draw for that there's a community just rally yeah. them all um they'll fill you know a couple rows of seats <laughs> that's no I, I literally think all the the heavyweight pvc guys are, are gunning for the deontay pay-per-view I, I don't think there's any looking back i think this is a Deont great deontay pay-per-view like oh this they, is a oh, good one the Hellenius is a great one. The Andy Ruiz is a great one. They, they're all going to – dude, the PBC fans will buy into that shit. And I think that's all Hal Heyman is telling these guys. Back. Like, stick around, and if you win, I'll try to get you on pay-per-view with, with Deontay Wilder. Listen, Andrew, your king is back. Can you see the first knockout? I can already no, see the first words the coming PBC. out of his pie hole while he's got that stupid robe and crown on his head. Your king Wait, he's is back, back for the PBC. He, yeah. He's back to the PBC. That's that's all Deontay is. He's not fighting uh, Usyk soon. He's not fighting Joshua or Wild uh, Fury. He soon. shouldn't fight him ever. He should just knock people out and collect paychecks. No, I would definitely watch him and Joshua. There's nothing wrong with that fight. Yes, it's not what it used to be, but there's still six foot seven athletes that are going to knock each other's heads off. I'm all in. I'm all oh, in Andrew, on watching that one. So. Back. So, but no, that all that bullshit is over with. He he's, he is a PBC fighter. By the way, Deontay, call me and I'll write your script before you win. Because you're going to win your first fight back. You will. You Don't worry. Daddy Al will take care of it. Um, Miguel, Kaunaki. Oh, we uh, did this. We yeah, already did I, I, this. Yeah, we already did this. All right, we're ahead. I, like, I got lost in Andrew. That hot take by Andrew was brought to you by <laughs> Clan Buterol. Deontay. Uh, Deontay Wilder's know. manager yeah, rules out Chisora. Aww. Aww. <laughs> He's really eyeing the... I, I don't buy that shit at all. Like, Shelly Finkel's lost his fucking mind. Like, Shelly Finkel just wants to cash in. If he sticks him directly into the ring with those two guys right out of the gate, he's insane. He should take a Derek Chisora. Uh, so, Finkel said, Derek Chisora? He just edged a split decision over Kubert Pulov. No way. Maybe the winner of Yusik Joshua. I don't know what Fury is doing. Oh, there there you go. He's still doing ayahuasca. Maybe if Joshua wins, it's a huge fight in the UK between those two. There's so many intangibles. So uh, so politically correct. Who's Deontay going to fight, Andrew? Yeah, if you listen to Coppinger. Coppinger? Is that Coppinger. how you say his name? Co Coppinger. Coppinger. Yeah. yeah. He said this week... Uh, Robert Hellenius is going to be the opponent for Deontay Wilder's comeback. It's a good opponent. The guy has two solid wins on PVC pay-per-views. Um, I believe solid. one of them might even be on the undercard of Deontay's fight. So all Deontay's fans in the PVC already know Hellenius. Uh, big white guy, six foot seven himself, Viking tattoos, no, good people record. People love it. A black dude knocking out a very white, white dude, that'll, well, that'll sell. Not only that, but not only that, because of the Tyson Fury Thing, right they can also say that it's his comeback to go after tyson fury look oh, the dude sure. six seven himself 
the guy's big. <laughs> I, I, you know, the, the skin complexion uh, is just is similar to Tyson Fury. He's big. He's white. Good record. They can they can make it look like Deontay's coming back from Fury. That's all I mean by that. Miguel. Um, well, there's no guarantee that uh, the Wilder is even going to win. So you know, it, it's right. gonna it kind of throws that up there in the air. It, it puts him up against that. You know, it, he, Hellenius isn't necessarily the the white hype sort of or white hope sort of dude. You know, like well, he, I'm gonna he can throw that at the end he of can the throw down. I actually figured out his marketing. <laughs> got it. I got it covered. He can, he, he can throw it down. You know, he he's got some hands, and you know, whether or not he can take Deontay's punches, another story, of course, that remains to be seen. But that's a great comeback fight for Deontay. It's a guy who looks, you know, especially if he comes out victorious, he got he got himself another big, big, big motherfucker, big white motherfucker that he's got in front of him that's got to tat it up, and he knocks him out. You know, if if uh, Wilder's able to do that, that's going to be a great comeback thing, and that puts him right back into the spot as far as like the potential winner of um or a potential fight with the winner of Usyk and Joshua, because you know, I I, I don't. I don't know if he's going to cut in line, you know, if, if let's say Usyk ends up winning and, you know, he decides that he wants to fight Fury. I certainly don't think that Wilder's going to cut in line and get to, to the winner of that fight before Fury does if Fury wants it. But nonetheless, why not the loser of the other fight? You know, let's say whoever loses between Usyk and Joshua, why not go after that? That's still pretty, pretty marketable. You know, that's still pretty reasonable, uh, especially if he ends up winning this fight with uh, with Hellenius here. So um, for Hellenius, it's it's an opportunity to make himself a fucking superstar. You know, he, nobody really knows who he is as far as like um, the, the general public, the casual fans, he ends up beating somebody like Wilder. People are going to know who the fuck he is, you know, and that puts him in a spot to pay, maybe fight, face a, a big name in, in the weight, weight class, I mean, besides Wilder, of course. So um, it's it's a good fight. You know, we don't know if this isn't like a 100% for, for Wilder. You know, yes, he's going to be the favorite, of course, but this is, again, one of those fights that we really, really legitimately don't know who's going to win. Yes, Wilder is going to be the favorite, but hey, we can't, uh, what does what um, Bob say? You know, don't. Don't uh, count out. Don't don't, oh, sleep, don't sleep on Hellenius. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't sleep on Hellenius. That's what I'm I might sign him to a contract. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it like this: If you go up against the PBC versus outside fighters mm-hmm. uh, record when they fight people out of the PBC, Hellenius should be the fucking favorite. They have like 19 out of 20 something victories going to the the guys that are not from the PBC. So the PBC has a bad record going up against guys that aren't already signed with Al Heyman. Um, the, Hellenius is one of those guys. He barely came to the PBC when and uh, the uh, Kalinowski fights. Uh, he he was a top ranked prospect before then. Very interested in this. Now I want to also say this: FightNet Radio has n- always tried to give Deontay Wilder the best financial advice that we can think of. Hold he's never money. listened to us, and he's left a lot of money on the table. My last motherfucking advice for this guy: if he's listening. If your next two fights aren't on pay-per-view against Robert Hellenius and then Andy fucking Ruiz, Al Heyman has screwed you big time, (laughs) literally, because both of these fights should secure Deontay Wilder's future in retirement. The uh, Hellenius fight, he is going to do good on just because his name is still hot with the PBC. But if Andy Ruiz can get a victory, and in my mistake, Ruiz is fighting Ortiz, correct? Yes, yes. That, that's, as far as we know, he's fighting Ortiz next. That's yes. the current one in the hospital. All right. Yes. If he beats Ortiz and looks good, and these two do not fight on pay-per-view, what is Al Heyman really doing, man? Because this fight, this Ruiz, uh, Andy Ruiz versus uh, Wilder is a good heavyweight matchup that deserves to be made. Deontay, don't look at Usyk. Don't look at jo- Joshua. If he loses again to Usyk, uh, is there really $20 million to be made for both guys? These guys are going to be wanting so much money, both of them. I don't know if that fight can get done if Joshua is coming off another loss. I would um, safely say this. If Usyk wins that fight, he's going to go full Klitschko and never leave Europe and just keep collecting paychecks. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't see you say I don't even we were talking about the loser of the fight. And I just think if Joshua loses, he's out the of fight, boxing. He's done much. It's way so, back of the line for him. Yes. And so I think it's it. it uh, Wilder Ruiz should be the, the fight that's made here uh, through through the PBC. Um, as I said earlier, if you are people connected with uh, Hellenius, um, let me give you some marketing pointers that will secure a much bigger payday for you. Number one, the next clan rally that comes up, you should just send out a release going, they're just a bunch of misguided guys, but they've got a good heart. That's number one. Number two, make boxing great. Red hats. I'm just telling you where to go with it. Uh, And um, number three, start 
talking about critical race theory being taught in American schools. That seems to be the three bullet points that will get all of white America right behind you, especially those in Florida. You enjoy that. I will say, I think Miguel <laughs> set it off with the biggest, uh, what could become the biggest rivalry in boxing if Triple G walked into the next press conference with a no clenbuterol, no oh. life. <laughs> That was fucking awesome. That he should do. Because no, he what he should say is, wait, again, marketing guy, Clem Buterol, yeah. not Mexican Come on, style. Man. He's already, you know, fucking waist deep into that shit. Just do it, bro. Just, Just fucking do it. Swim. That's but right. Go it's all nice. the way in. If you're going to do it, go mm-hmm. all the way in on the topic. Could you imagine Canelo? Canelo would be like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> if I was Canelo, I'd have to hit him at the press conference and say, face. <laughs> I would have to. I gotta uh, throw a real punch at the press. That conference. would throw him off his game so much. It would get in his head so fucking much. Yeah. Oh my god! Thanks. I'd have a different Clem Buterol. Like I would rip off all the logo, like the slogans, Clem Buterol. It's what's in breakfast. Um, <laughs> like I would do. Like I'd have a different T-shirt for every press conference every time. I would train in different Clem Buterol T-shirts. Good night. You just do it. Just Clem do Buterol. it. Clem Buterol. Do just do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, uh, because you've demanded him, and apparently uh, there wasn't much Bob this week, welcome to the De La Hoya suite, just before we wind up and wrap up this show. Uh, De La Hoya was very busy, especially when Ramirez got named to B-Ball. And here are some lovely select quotes from De La Hoya to TV Boxeo. Uh, Eddie, Tommy Hearns is not B-Ball's promoter. I'm working with B-Ball's manager. Who is still the dude from the MTK, by the way, Vadim mm. Korn- Kornilov. Yeah, they just don't call it the MTK. Like, they're fucking Russian mafia, dude. Like, what's up? The fight is going to be negotiated. It's going to be done. I am excited that Zerto Ramirez has finally has a chance. The one that he's been waiting for. And he is more than ready to beat Bival and gain revenge. Also that week, he had a chance to talk about Ryan Garcia. A lot. Because he made rounds. And this is what he had to say on Ryan Garcia. I mean, look, first thing is first. What? First thing is did What? Huh? What did you just say? <laughs> like, wouldn't there be a needle that's scratching your head if Oscar went, like, full? Why is it that it's, like, more formal when we're talking about Bivol and, and Ramirez? Now, Oscar caught on the moment. Look, first thing is first. What did you say, Oscar? First thing is first. You heard me. Like I said, <laughs> Fortin is a very dangerous opponent. We're going to talk about it in a minute. And no, he wasn't. I just couldn't let first thing is first go of De La Hoya quotes. So that's bravo. Mario. Um, and he talked a little bit more about Canelo and how he's official. Like if Canelo fights Bivol again, it will be worse. That's the bottom line. My exes don't listen. They're stupid bitches. <laughs> Styles I told fights. I told him not to go over there. I told, I told him, him not, not to date go that, over there. Not to date that guy. Not to date that guy. <laughs> Tommy Hearns doesn't love you like me. But if you're gonna yeah, go get your it, ass handed dude. to you, you go do it again, bro. You're gonna get beat worse the next time. All right, Andrew. Uh, Oscar crawled out of his bar long enough to make a bunch of quotes. What do you think about his takes are on Garcia and the, uh, Canelo and Bivol? Well, um, the Ramirez, I think he's he's right on with that one. I do I do like how he threw out there about getting the revenge. That's part of the connection that he needs to bring between. It. Listen, you really want to sell Andrew, the Ramirez? first thing is Wait, first. You really want to sell the Ramirez fight <laughs> when he beats Bebo? Listen, when he beats Bebo, he's going to show the Mexicans who the real Mexican is uh, uh, coming out of the country. That's it. That is going to blow that fight right out the fucking water. And then Ramirez can follow up with. I've always been more Mexican than you, Canelo. Let's prove it. And boom, that fight sells. It's a million fucking pay-per-views. It doesn't even need another country involved. I'm dead serious. Um, so they have that connection there. It's a huge fight that I know Canelo's trying to fucking avoid because of the circumstances, but whatever. Um, I like that one. Going on to Ryan, Ryan proved who he was. We'll we'll end the show we'll, with that. We're going to end on him in just a second, yep. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then uh, the last one, Canelo, he's absolutely right. It, it might be easier the second time. B-Ball knows he could take Canelo's punch. Canelo didn't look out of shape. He didn't look old. He looked. He was landing combinations. He was landing counter shots. I remember a right hand that made B-Ball's head turn all the way around. 
Nothing hurt him. Nothing stopped him. He kept taking it. He came forward, and he kept hitting you. That doesn't change. The only thing that changes is the confidence level of B-ball goes up. He probably beats you easier the next time. Miguel? Um, it, it Probably, probably, most likely, I'd say. Um, I, I don't. I don't want to like harp on the fact that uh that canelo went vegan for that fucking fight but oh, that, nice. that that we oh, can't forget nice. that that could be one of the reasons why he seemed weaker why the punches didn't do as much as he as we expected okay. right it, it may very well be that it may because generally he is flat-footed anyway that, that's kind of the way he is anyway but the power the, the reason one of the reasons he's flat-footed is he can generate so much fucking power that way right that then being on your toes so I would not be surprised if Canelo does go with a different, you know, it incorporates me back into Miguel, his fucking diet. Yes. You're absolutely fucking right. I just want, before I let you go on, you need to get a hold of somebody to ask that question. That is a brilliant question. That question should have been asked in the first press conference. That should be the title of somebody's story. Are you fucking vegan anymore? That's awesome. Keep going, Miguel. Um, and uh, well, thank you. Uh, and uh, so, like, I, th I think that's one of the things that we can't forget in the rematch because that is one of the things that could potentially be different. Yes, uh, Bilbao most likely will come into that rematch with more confidence knowing that, yeah, I handled this motherfucker, this motherfucker the first time. And chances are maybe I can even stop him the second time. But that is going to be maybe a different a different Canelo. I mean, Can we saw, you I know, Canelo in his rematch. Year, with this fight. I think huh? there's also a thing that I noticed about that fight going back. Body by clambuterol, body without clambuterol. <laughs> like, I really just think he overlooked Bivol. He didn't go through his normal training it, or it, physical regimens. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm healthy maybe. now. And, I'm a vegan. Now, you look skinny fat, bro. Like, and, I don't know and, what to and, tell you. And here's the thing. Like, we, we don't know if that's the case. We can't, we're not going to 100% say that that exactly is what happened, you know, but that is one of the variables, right? That's what happens in an experiment. You change a fucking variable and whatnot, and we see the end result. So the, it could be that maybe, maybe, you know, this is kind of maybe a little bit of a stretch, but maybe this time the bull comes in a little bit too confident and Canelo comes in a way better fucking physical shape and, you know, inc incorporating me back into his diet, and we get ourselves a different result at the rematch because we did see a different Canelo in the rematch with Triple G. So, hey, you know what? He, you have to learn, right? That's just how it is. You fucking fight somebody. It doesn't go the way you want it. You get a rematch. Boom. You get better at it. So, you know, maybe Please, maybe we'll see that. Can you get Miguel indoor? Is there any press conferences coming to Vegas? Uh, uh, most likely. Most likely. Yet. I mean, the likely will be. We can get him Miguel, in. the way yeah. you said that about the, the – that's how, you know, science projects are done. You got to remove variables. Yeah. You need to pitch that to Canelo and them to see if they're doing that. If they're, if they're actually going back to their first diet – what they used to do, um, because that that is going to tell a lot going into the rematch. That, that is good advice or a good piece of knowledge to have going into the rematch with Bivol. If they go back to steak, and I don't, and I just mean ve not vegan. I don't mean right, right. Incorpor incorporate, yeah, incorporate yeah. back to the diet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if they do that and he knocks out Triple G or looks, you know, got the six pack, everything looks good again. Oh yeah, that that rematch is way more. Um, yeah, trust me, that body will be powered by. Clan Buterol. Oh my God! Uh, Please, Triple G, call me. I've got a million of those things you can do. Oh. Yeah, but we will put. I in, lost weight on Clan Buterol. These are my pants from like six years ago. Hi, my name is Triple G. Many of you know me from molesting lots of small children and then being thrown out as a famous sports. Oh my God! I would do all of it. I would do all of it. It would be great. I would. Oh my God! It would be great. Like, and by the way, yes, I was making fun of the guy from Subway, not. Triple, Triple oh. G is actually a really nice guy. J Jared, Jared? Jared from Subway? Uh, <laughs> Jared. Can we get Jared as our spokesman from jail? I'm just thinking outside the box. And by the way, yes, I feel I should do a GoFundMe for Jared to be – just for the stupid ads, bro. Like, how uh, could you what, not hold your Jared shit together guilty of doing money? some shit with chicks too? Uh, I don't know if you want to have him as our spokesperson. I don't know. Yeah, just leave Jared alone. It I don't seems very much us. Yeah. Joseph Parker is taking on Otto Wallen for... Are you going to go fund me to shank that motherfucker? Is that the only go fund me? No, no, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shank him. Uh, okay, makes sense. He gets on the shank list. We'll add him to the list. <laughs> Otto Wallen is taking on Joseph Parker in the battle of Who Cares. Um, this is our <sighs> newest recurring segment of Who Cares. These are one-word answers, but you never know. Andrew might go off. It happens. Andrew, do you care? <laughs> Oh, was that for no, me? No, it's a big ass. Are you asking me? Yeah, Andrew, do you care? Oh. No, Fuck. Andrew, do you care? No. 
Okay. No, no, I can't even go into it. I hope no, Joseph- no, you don't have to. That's why we don't even have to discuss it. They're irrelevant people. Um, Miguel, do you care? Um, I uh, unfortunately I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> Strangely, I'm the only one who does. Just so I can go to a press conference and rub Otto Wellen's nose in it some more. <laughs> Cool, dude. You were in an old yeller match at your age. Congratulations. You are definitely a legit heavyweight. Uh, in the battle of who cares? Haney on Cambosos rematch. You got to do the right thing by me. What? Haney thinks he's still the A side? Andrew, do you care? What? He is. Um, yes. Listen, oh. what, I don't, what I'm a little suspect on. And Miguel, I think you brought this up about Haney not wanting to go back out there. No, he want, he uh -huh. believes he's the A side. Like if I'm gonna drag my yeah. ass by blimp all the way back out there. But but what what I don't like is he signed a contract that uh -huh. says the free match was supposed to go out there, Lee. So let's let's be an honorable man. Or you get AIDS. It. Or get AIDS. Or the COVID. Just yeah, remember you know, that's I, in play. I don't like how it's. It, it doesn't seem like he's Haney's, going back. Haney's Haney's gonna get the COVID. Haney's going to get the AIDS. I don't think he wants this fight. I think he got beat. Legit. Tell me I'm wrong. Do you care, Miguel? Uh, I, I do. I do because, I mean, I, I would love to see, you know, them them have the a rematch. And whether or not whether or not it happens. Well, whether or not it happens over there or not is another story, of course. But, you know, even last night, you know, he was briefly interviewed on the, the Garcia fight. And uh, he was, like, right off the bat, he was like, well, because you know, I think, I don't know if it was Mannix or who the one that was interviewing at the time. But he was talking about he has, you know, uh, Camboso's next. And, like, the first thing out of his mouth is like, well, we don't know if Camboso's is actually next or not. It's like, what the fuck you mean you don't know? Like, I thought that was the plan. Yeah. But, you know, it's so already, you know, putting hurdles up there. I don't know if he meant like the fight in general or specifically going back out there to Australia to fight him again over there. I don't know because I'm not sure what the contract specifically said. If it just said rematch period or rematch in Australia. So nonetheless, yes, I do care about this one. I want to see this fight again. Fuck it, you know. If if, if it's in the contract that can both get a rematch, give him his fucking rematch. You know, unfortunately, uh, Lomachenko didn't get his rematch against, uh, you know, uh, uh, Telfimo. I know it wasn't in the contract. I get it, but still, I would have loved to see a rematch of that one. Let's Let's see a rematch of this one. I'm down to see if there's anything different. All right. Uh, we're getting to this weekend's fights, but don't forget, we're still in who cares mode. <laughs> Oscar Colazzo outpoints ex champion uh, Victor Salu Saludar. Did I get it right? Saludar? Yes, yes Saludar. Yes. Right, Saludar. Come here. Hit the Teddy Atlas button. I take dumps. Well, for your first thing. question. I, wait, I hold on. on. The first question here is Is this Luis Colazzo's kid? Oh. Is this Louis Colazzo? It's a different Colazzo. Well, it's a different Colazzo, but I don't know if they're related. I mean, that's not exactly a very and That's the only reason name. I pulled the story. I don't really care otherwise. I. Uh, yeah, I don't give, give a shit. Salu I don't know Saludar from a hole in the head, and it's an eliminator. I don't Andrew, well, do you care? Fibers, good lord. Maybe it's his dump. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, do you he, he care? Na he names his shits. You should. You should just say that Louis Colazzo, you're like related. At least you got a connection there. Lamont Roach, who, do you care? Like, I don't care who he fought. Like, I didn't even know the dude was still in boxing. Like, this was the most shocking thing when I was pulling. What? Aren't, weren't you irrelevant at one point? I mean. That's a lot of the, yeah. Like, what yeah. happened to this dude? Like, it's shocking. And by the way, Oscar, shame on you for dragging out Lamont Roach and putting him on, like, your label. I mean, like, you're just looking for anybody. Lamont Roach. Miguel, do you care? Uh, you know, it, it's a 130-pound division. Uh, I, to some degree, I do care. Now, we still have uh, Shakur Stevenson at that weight, that weight class, so fucking, why not? Don't you know, sleep when, on when Lamont we start, we start having, Yeah, when we started putting a little bit more, you know, uh, spotlight on uh, potential opponents for top guys like Shakur uh, at 130, and anybody else for that matter, uh, why not? Yes, I, so, I, yeah, I, I watched the fight. It was it was a bit of a snooze fest, to be honest. It was, like, one-sided, so it wasn't exactly the most entertaining fight. I'm not sure if it really did anything for, you know, Lamont Roach, other than, of course, getting the victory under his belt, but uh, I I cared about this one. Yeah, sure I did. Miguel, do you? I, I mean, Andrew, do you care? I'll piggyback. I'll just go with what Miguel said. Uh, it, it's a light division. He has a decent record. He needs some. He needs better opposition on his resume before taking him. Like Jamal Herring, he lost a unanimous decision to Herring. He goes on to fight a bunch of nobodies. Angel Rodriguez being the best uh, record he's faced so far since the Herring defeat. Um, but Angel Rodriguez really still not the biggest opponent at 130 either so definitely needs fighter, more ropes. like oscar's just getting fodder for his cannons like this is someone you can feed to later on 
That's all he is. Most like yes. That's and I don't think Lamont likely. Roach sees it that way. But dude, you went to the elite level and you fucking you you struck out. I don't want to break it to you. You did. I mean, you just you did. Well, I just he's got to have that another time at bat, man. He's got to have another time at bat. So I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. How? Uh, never mind. I could get into a whole thing like just basing that on UFC guys who like get one or two shots and get beat mm-hmm. one or two times and then go mm-hmm. literally to the back of the line mm-hmm. in the UFC. It's the one thing I don't disagree with the way Dana handles business. Well, it's not really him, but right. this takes us to our main event of the evening. Hello, everybody. This is Mauro Ranello. I know. I'm on the wrong network. Um, But it's the only impersonation I do that I'm very happy with. I don't like Bob all that much. Oscar De La Hoya is just a running joke that makes me smile because I'm not really doing Oscar De La Hoya. Um, With that said, this is Oscar's hot girlfriend. Uh, Look at him, kids. This is Oscar's boyfriend. He will be fighting Canelo at some point if you think I'm crazy. Oscar will work it out. Um, no, he has a bunch of girlfriends, though. You, you oh, can't he forget loves, Ramirez. Right. He man. loves him uh, some Rai Rai. He's got Ramirez, he's got Ortiz, and he's got Garcia. He, he's not hurt for prospects. He, I don't know if he has stars, but he's Ryan definitely Garcia not hurt for prospect, prospects. Is Andrew, in your mind? Who? Is Who? Ryan Garcia a prospect? Yes, because he hasn't made it to the elite level. We're talking prospects of the face of boxing here. I'm not talking prospects. Yeah, oh, yeah, for no, no, no. I agree with you. Belt. Yeah, but we're in talking Ryan's about the face mind, he of should boxing. already be on the pound for pound. Right list. now, Ryan Garcia, Virgil Ortiz, and Gilberto Ramirez are still in those categories as someone who could take over the pay per view for the Mexican community, either here in America, in Mexico, wherever. These guys, they, they, Virgil's from Texas, man. If he starts selling out this uh, fucking Dallas stadium. Trust me, Oscar's not hurting for money. Uh, I'm telling you, Gilberto Ryan Garcia Ramirez. is invited to Oscar's house for spoon parties and women, okay? And Ryan Garcia possibly could be the face of the whole fucking thing. Well, I really think Goosen can humble him and put him in that position. I mean... Did you see how Did you see how packed L.A. looked? Uh-huh. And for a guy who hasn't really fought in anyone, Delaware is doing a good job of packing that house over there in L.A. He's done really well with Anaheim and L.A. He has. He's man between the forum, which is one venue that nobody's really using because it's independent, and the MSG group, which probably means they're tied into Bob and why nobody fights there. But you can get the Crypto Arena, formerly Staples, um, and he's done really well with Anaheim. I mean, really well with shit cards like you got these guys fighting nobodies and you're selling out anaheim that's strong dude that's no it's where the ducks play that's the real deal i mean he's done a great job he's definitely coming over for a spoon party and strippers i mean no doubt (laughs) ryan's on his hot list uh miguel do you care that he beat javier fortuna i mean it wasn't a real test i'm kind of with andrew but that's a strong sentence andrew like, I'm debating if that isn't the title of the show. Ryan Garcia is still a prospect. Oh, what a show title. That'll piss people off. Ooh, I'm liking that title. Although, Reynoso, go smell Canelo shit. Mm, mm, mm. It's going to be a tough one for me this week when I'm doing the graphics. Uh, Miguel, do you care? Um, well, yes, yes. Uh, in regards to, to you know pissing people off a couple of things number one uh i, I don't like the fact that uh, the fucking staple center is now called you know crypto.com crypto. com, com bullshit, right uh furthermore uh the great western forum on side note it's now called the kia forum like what the fuck is going on those are some killer ass iconic you know the forum places you don't like you know, dignity as, health I'm not, i don't like that bullshit. health park and... i mean that that has been named these are i'm talking about iconic fucking places like staple actually center, you know, that like. that area like between where the the galaxy plays and that like when it first opened it was going to be iconic and then you like fucking hoard it out to dignity healthcare mental yeah like, what, what it, it, it was everything it was home what depot you, center it was stub hub center home depot it was center work stub hub worked it had, it had that's, everything uh, that's, the that's iconic thing. that's got some meat on it yeah <sighs> um so so about this fight 
Um, uh, it, I think we it, it's time to you know give Ryan his his credit. You know he he did he fought a dude who was a former champion. Yes, he was like way the fuck smaller. I, I believe the fight was supposed to happen earlier, and some bullshit happened to where they ended up rescheduling for you know last last, yeah, last night. And uh, Fortuna uh, wasn't liking the fact that it was going to be at one thirty five, so he decided to make it at one forty, and they all agreed to it. That as my understanding of it, and Ryan Garcia comes in at one forty, and he feels better than ever. Um, so I, I, I gotta give, we gotta give props to where he's in. No, his fights with Reynoso, um, Garcia, I mean, uh, they were all knockouts, basically. He had, like, five fights with fucking, with the Reynosos, and he knocked everybody out. His first fight with Goosen, it goes the fucking distance. It's like, oh, shit, this is already not looking good. And then he, you know, this is his second fight with Goosen, and he, he fucking kills, uh, for, um, uh, for, for Tuna. Tuna. Yeah. So I was gonna say Fondura shit, Fortuna. So Fondura. like he he whoops his ass. You know, yes, he did look way the fuck bigger. He looked taller. He was probably heavier in the ring. So you know, he's basically uh, fighting an uh, you know overmatched guy uh, as far as size goes. It was but a weight class we smaller. About... It's it's yeah. a very wait, classic. Wait a minute. Look. They've done this a wait lot a minute, with Ryan. Though. For, he, Fortuna is the guy that lost his title because he missed the 135 division against Robert Easter. So we can't forget yeah. that he missed yeah. weight right. at 135. Yeah. He only went to 140. It's not like, you know, he's at welterweight now. So, yeah, let's. There, there's a little, there's a little bit uh, that Ryan could be like, come on, man. He, the guy was in a championship fight and didn't make weight. Maybe he can't make that weight anymore. Yeah, yeah, maybe. So, so, but, but even more of a reason, I think we should give Garcia his props. You know, he fought himself a yeah. world champion, and he fucking took him out, and he looked sharp as fuck right off the bat. The pop yep. and the snap and the jabs that he was landing, dude, those lead right hands that he was landing on fucking Fortuna were clean as shit. Yes, he still has that habit of closing his eyes when he throws punches for some goddamn reason, but regardless, he fucking was looking sharp as all hell. I was digging it. I was like, okay, this is this is kind of different. Like, there was a bit of a shift. It felt different. Seeing the way he came out right off the bat, landing those jabs, hearing how snappy they were. I mean, shit, I don't think anybody who was in front of him would have fucking beat him that night like last night he looked good and yes yes he did fight a guy he's who was a he was sh- shorter Andrew yes he's, yes yes he is he's still a prospect i'm not saying he's not but i think it's legitimately time that he that if if you know and i'm gonna i'll be the I think number B one level I'll, i think I'm you can take one him one full hater. level up yeah. right somebody I, I, in the top a, 10 yeah I, i'm a major garcia hater i totally am i think this fucker was like brought up and i'm not crazy about you know his, his the development of his career as far as opposition goes i got a now. big social so, media following bro that's why i'm here Right. So, you know, so I, I got to give him. I know Jake props. Paul. He looked fucking great Do you know yesterday. I know Jake Paul? Uh, Calm down. One, one, one thing I did not <laughs> like, I will say. <laughs> one thing I will say. You know, the fact that he was calling out, uh, what's his name, uh, Gervonta Davis Wright, which I did like. But he immediately said, I'm never going back to 135. I'm going to stay at 140 from here on out. I was like, wait a second. Okay, now he's going to try to call him out at 140. What the fuck? Okay. If the fight happens at 140, so be it. I still want to see it. But now I'm a little like, ah, what the hell? I thought this fight was supposed to take place at 135. Again, we're not talking about that much of a difference. It is five pounds. There's only one weight class, not two or three weight classes above or anything like that. So the fight can still be made. Uh, I, I was hoping it would still take place at 135, but maybe in, in the larger picture, that's pretty irrelevant. As long as the fight actually does happen, nonetheless, I, I'm down with that. You know, I'm, I'm doing cool with that. So uh, I liked his attitude. Yes, I kind of didn't like the whole at the very end of the you know the, the post fight um, interview in the ring talking about oh Lord Savior Jesus Christ etc cetera, etc cetera, etc. Cetera. It's like okay, I, I get it, bro. I get it. You know, keep it low key. You know, what I'm saying you don't have to go all full George Foreman on on us and everything whatnot, right? But nonetheless, yes, I do care. Yes, it was a pretty significant win. It's time to give him his props, and I'm salivating that potential fight with fucking Tank. Hell yeah! Uh, I will say this for the crowd, um, my. Optic eye watching the thing. The thing that I have noticed that's most interesting mm-hmm. is the growth of Goosen. Goosen mm-hmm. is a guy who doesn't believe in going for knockouts. He believes in good mechanics and a lot of punches. That's the Goosen style. There is not a Goosen fighter you could say doesn't follow that format. You're going to go in, you're going to outwork, you're going to throw a lot of punches. That's how you win a match. With Ryan, he's aggressive. He mm-hmm. is being more aggressive with his advice, and that's. Um, an interesting growth in Goosen. On he still dresses like shit when he goes to the ring. He looks like a <laughs> mafia guy. I don't. I don't know what that look is that you've been doing for the last twenty years. I don't dig it. Um, oh, and I'm going to think outside oh, oh, of the box for Oscar to make a payday on Ryan for the next fight. Hear me out. Exhibition. Ryan Garcia, Jake Paul. 
take the payday, bro. He's going to beat him. Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. It's an exhibition. There's no win. There's it's no an. It's, it's supposed yeah, to no, be no, an exhibition. And, and where Ryan's at, he don't need those fights. Ryan, yeah, we just said Ryan's potential of taking over boxing. Those guys mm-hmm. make twenty million a fight. He doesn't need Jake Paul. Jake Paul so would need Ryan. So far, he's got to keep yeah. it yeah. in his pants. All right, he's kept it nah, in his pants. And now that can get paid off too. I ain't even worried about no, that. No, but listen. he's been fucking crazy in the past. Like he goes deep off. Dude, the he rails. had one incident. He had one incident so far. That's it. That's all he's had. I was depressed, bro. Night, you don't know me. <laughs> last night, he came back pretty fucking sharp on what everybody in the boxing world was considering a test. That's what I hate about the boxing world. That is world not a test. Sometimes. I hate when they go into fights. This is a test. This is a test. Former champ. Test, test. Mm-hmm. Then the fight happens. Like, oh, that dude didn't want it. Oh, that dude, wasn't no test. He wasn't even there to fight. But what happened, happened. And what I seen mm-hmm. last night was Ryan Garcia develop into what potentially could be a star in this sport his hand speed his power his look his demeanor everything the, the closing about the distance him. the way well, he closed you know, the distance and they're gonna be that left hook, on both how sides of these fence he let, covered let me, the ground, how quickly yeah, he let me tell you something let me tell you something about that davis matchup not only is gervonta davis Looks smaller than than Ryan Garcia. He is smaller. He is smaller. He's smaller he by fights over smaller five guys. fucking inches. Five. He's got he's got smaller arms by three inches, dude. That is why they're calling for this fight. Gervonta Davis will never get on the inside of Ryan Garcia as long as Guzin is in his fucking corner. Guzin getting Smart Ryan dude. was the best Smart thing that dude. could happen for Garcia. Because that man knows the sport of boxing. He's made legends. He's made Hall of Famers. Last night, Ryan looked 10 times different than what he has before. Not yep. just some left yep. hook with a smile. He ha- uh-huh. He's starting to develop the package. You give that. You make that kid the package, and you give him a Gervonta Davis victory? He don't need Jake Paul, man. He's a $20 million fighter himself. I understand. I understand. And the, I realize the, the way probably... he covered distance is what I love. The fact yep. the way he was able to, to get close, he, the, the ground that he covered, not just with that, that fucking lead right hand, but also with that, the, the, I think there was the left hook that initially dropped for Tuna. The way he leaped in there and landed that shit. Oh, that shit was clean. It was so fucking fast. The way he covered that ground. That you was... got Fontuna knew in the first round the speed was too much. Yeah. He, he, yeah. He's getting hit. He thinks he's going low. He gets hit high, and he looks at him like, what the fuck? Who just yeah, hit me? I, as much just... as I want to shit on King Riot on all his – dude's got fast hands. He's he got is fast. totally cut for a Goosen. If, Gus, if Goosen can show him all the spots to hit and give him just a little level of defense, nobody's going to beat his ass. Nobody's going to catch him. Those hands are too speed fast, speed. Andrew. Hands. There's guys out there that can match. They're, they're going to be great fights, and I think that's why they go to 140. Look, you got to remember the kid's only 23. Moving him to 140 might just be because he's 5'10 and 135 pounds usually doesn't doesn't work out. So you move him up to 140. All of those other young Stevenson, Haney, uh, Cambosos, Telefimo, Lopez. Lopez has already talked about going to 140. He's a small ass yeah, lightweight. Yeah. Let his ass come to 140. Ryan to fucking take him out. That's what Guzan said. Guzan said, we're going to put five pounds on you. You're going to go up there. You're going to face guys like Josh Taylor, Jose Ramirez, fucking these, these, these uh, Sapeda. These, these guys, they're not as fast as you. They might not even be better boxers than you. We don't even know the potential of boxing skill Ryan has yet. So Guzan said, we're moving you there. We're going to take that division out. Cat, uh, what is the guy that is cat skill or whatever just went to the, the oh, round? Cat, with, Catterall. With, Catterall. Catterall just went round with Taylor. He doesn't have the speed of, of Ryan Garcia. So you see Guzan looking at all of this. Then he looks at the age and the size of all the guys that are going to be moving up for 135. This is a brilliant, brilliant move for Ryan Garcia to go now, get settled at 140, get built up. I, Dude, the ba, ba, Josh... Ba, 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 ba. That hot take brought to you by ah, Kyan Peterall. Oh, dude, you were so deep ass up. Your head is up his ass. Hey, he hasn't fought anybody. He hasn't right. fought anybody. Mm-hmm. Yes. I right. agreed with your There's first one thing hot I take. about boxing is that our future is always bright. This ball never stops fucking rolling. I don't care what you're division you're fan. in. And Ryan Garcia matched up against Josh Taylor, matched up against Gervonta Davis. Oh, no, I would Devin love to see him against Josh Taylor. I want to see what happens when the kid gets hit in the face hard. That's it. 
That's that's the key. I'm totally about that. But your first take was who's the correct in? take. I and this hot take about Andrew's first hot take about being a prospect is brought to you by Clan Buterall. No, it's true though. He's a prospect. He's a prospect for the future of the sport. And Don't there are people it. right now getting yeah. ready to write us emails and be slam us on social media and tell us we're full of shit. And Javier Fortuna is the real deal. Let me explain. Andrew, how old is Junior right now? He's a Javier Fortuna is a southpaw. That's hard. He's a former uh. champ. He's coming in off of a, the lowest point of his life, not only with the mental thing that he was having, but also that he went 12 rounds. Everyone's questioning Guzan. Everyone's questioning Canelo, Canelo, Canelo. Oh, Reynoso and Canelo hate you. What are your feelings? Oh, Ryan, they hate you. What are your feelings? Fuck those guys. You know what? Ooh, Reynoso could you imagine if he went that route? I would actually be into Ryan. He's like, fuck them. Yeah, they suck. He, he, he loses I found to Joshua I'm going to be a world he champion. I'm going to be an undisputed world champion. He loses Andy Ruiz, and he loses Ryan Garcia. Like, right now, all Reynoso could put his hat on is Canelo. And, oh, yeah, I forgot. Canelo I don't know. I think Canelo hates himself. We've either. actually done oh. that joke too many times. But yeah. so, I think King but, Rye, King Rye yeah. literally, and, 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 of all the got... selections, Miguel, like, literally yeah. of all the selections of all the trainers, you wind up with Goosen? Like, I didn't even know he'd I, be willing I, to work hey, with Oscar. I, I questioned it. I did. I legitimately questioned it myself. And, and to it's touch a hard on, camp, you know, so man. That dude is legit on the way he trains people. Uh, to, to touch on Reynoso's real quick, uh, yeah, it's it's not looking good besides the fact that everybody is, like, leaving. We have the, the two guys, uh, Valdez and Canelo, coming off of losses right now. So their, their shit is not coming, not looking very good. So I, I don't blame Garcia for leaving. I don't blame, you know, for him going with Goosen. I did, I legitimately did question Goosen. I was like, what the fuck? Why, why would you go to Goosen? It's like, dude, I mean, he, I, I legit, like, I, I, we know who Goosen is. It's not like he's not uh, unproven or by any stretch of the imagination. He's very much proven, but it just didn't seem like it would be uh, the, the team that they are. And I, after that first fight uh, with I forgot what the guy's is uh, Togbe, I think his name is uh, that uh, that guy's fought. Togbe. No, no, Togbe. Togbe. Togbe, yeah. yeah, who who uh, his first fight with Goosen, uh, I was like, what the fuck? He went twelve rounds with this guy that he should have finished it. I immediately questioned. I I questioned it right off the bat when he was going to go to Goosen, and then I saw that first fight, and I was like, this is such a terrible it's fucking hard. team. And it's then last hard. night, it's I was like, oh, wait a second. Okay, maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe I jumped the gun a little bit. Let's see where this progresses. And seeing how good Ryan looked last night, yes, 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 it's it's a guy who he was bigger. I get it. But he did what he needed to do. He looked great, and he fucking mopped the floor with Fortuna. And it was with Goosen in his corner. I, I was pretty impressed. Hey, and, and Miguel, Gervonta is going to look ten times smaller. He's oh, yeah. five inches bigger than him. But five. it's a name on the record. It's, it's a oh, I hear on you. the record. I hear you, but the hate won't stop because no, as soon as still be a prospect at that point in my mind. When you fight guys that are in the weight class, literally two below you that are coming up, or one or two weight classes to take the money fight because it makes sense. I how many times have we seen it? Like I, I've watched it happen historically. PBC is the master of this. We're going to take the guy in weight division two down, but he wants yeah. a shot at the title two weights division up. Yeah, sure, we'll make that fight. All day. They, they did it with Juan Manuel Marquez Mayweather. Yeah. He was he was Pacquiao's rival. Fuck it. We'll take him to welterweight. Then when they get to welterweight, they miss weight. They end up at junior middleweight for that fight. Fuck out of here. Yeah. They did it with that one. Hey, listen. Uh, oh, what was I going to tell you? Oh, I forgot. Yeah, darn it. I'm I sorry. forgot. Well, that brings us to our name game sh newest game show that we're going to close out with today before we do all the add shit at the end like we always do um this is our newest game show the future i would like to see everybody play along canelo fights triple g and loses Ooh. triple g uh canelo then fights bivol because that somehow magically got made by hearns and he already had the contract with bivol and he loses again he fires reynoso and goes and trains with goosen and his first press release is yeah i probably should have listened to king rye he was right. Reynoso was full of shit. How perfect would that be, Miguel? Um, I, highly unlikely. Oh I no, it, it's just, shit's not gonna happen. Uh, He'll gonna retire happen. if he loses it, twice. It, it, like, yeah, yeah, you're not gonna. It, that shit's not gonna happen. But 
how great would it be for boxing? Like, would we not eat that up like it was a fucking bowl full of spaghetti? I mean, in the in the short term, we would, we would, but I mean, in the long term, I'm not sure if that'll be that perfect for us. We we want to see these guys back in the ring a lot longer, and if uh, if if in the short term, if that's what we get with with I a think shitty long term plan, so if he lost the triple G, I think he'd look. Nah, 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 thank you. I mean, you think he still well, wants yes men? Oh, I'll train uh, myself. Actually, that's probably uh, the truth. Oh, I'll just train maybe. myself. I'm already doing it. Why am I paying you money? <laughs> I like where I like where the sport has been going this last year. Um, we've had some great matchups, even with the PBC. It seems like they're starting to get their shit together, and they realize the fans aren't going to watch just because you put it on for free. You got to make the guys fight each other. They want to see competitive um, bouts, and the PBC has been doing it now. It looks like they're starting to reach over tables, trying to get other matchups, especially with Eddie Hearn, um, Spence Tony, Cropper, right. two yard line. Triple G, uh, uh, Canelo already signed. Oh um, God. Ramirez versus wins that fight, They're going to fuck everything up in that division. Like, everything uh, goes out of whack if Canelo loses that fight. Jer- Jermel Charlo, finally undisputed. Wow. Looks like the real deal at junior middleweight. And waiting really for legit. Like, I, I'm a convert. I'm a convert, dude. You came big. You and came big in that fight. Jamel. And just for Jamel. This whole thing about attaching the two brothers, like they both accomplished no, something, we no, cannot not do. We cannot do. Otherwise, change both of your names to A. Charlo, as we have <laughs> kindly pointed out on this show repeatedly. If you're going to be one person fighting in multiple weight divisions, and you're going to be twins, first name A. Dot. You can legally do this. I've looked into it. Charlo, you don't have to change the last name. You're just changing your first name to A. Better B versus B. That be? Boy, that's be another future be perfect fight. situation. <laughs> Better B versus B Vol might be the hottest <laughs> for all boxing diehards. I mean, come on, we're in a real good place right now. Andrew, you uh, didn't answer the question. What? If Canelo went to Goosen after a loss or two, how crack cocaine ish would it be for Fight Net Radio? Yeah, that'd be pretty bad. That'd be, that'd be bad for Chris. Yeah. First words out of Canelo's mouth. You got to stop with the fucking clenbuterol. <laughs> like, knock that shit off already. We, we know what you're doing. Knock that shit off. Knock it off. The skinny fat thing in the last fight. Like, if you're going to cycle like all the other fighters, just do it right. Yeah. Don't be an asshole about it. <laughs> and the vegan. No, we, need, we all no. look. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I am going to say it because we're, we're I've been told by boxers get, and fighters get it. I'm asking for years. Question. Everybody yep. is juicing, except the people. The only and people if, who get and, caught are lazy people who don't know how to do it correctly. Like, let me tell you how hard you have to try. Like, in the case of Big Baby Miller, dude, three drugs. Three drugs you got caught with in your system. That's, I don't know what they're putting in me. <laughs> That's hilarious to me. You think Ryan Garcia looks like that naturally? Shit, no. They're like they're testing his blood and they're making him a perfect human. And if you don't think he's not cy- hey, no, King just... Rye fans, let me help you out. He Wait, you, you mean Xander Holyfield and Roy Jones really didn't look like that naturally? Are you fucking seriously? <laughs> neither did Mark McGuire and neither did uh, Sammy Sosa. No, fuck no. Look, you do one cycle at the beginning of your camp. Get your shit dialed in. Train it out to the end. Catch your weight. Go fucking win and collect your paycheck. Like, hey, I, only I love, morons I get caught Ward, on the dude. juice. Uh, Andre Ward literally went out and got uh, the Balco guy. What was his name? Victor Conte? Yeah, yeah Conte. He got yeah. Caught, he was like, fuck it. He's just going to be my supplement, dude. Hey, hey, what's up, everyone? This guy. He's my yeah. guy. Yeah. I forget yeah, That's who like it was. bringing a drug dealer, you know what I mean, to a, oh, yeah. a party. Like, what? Are you serious right now? Conte is your... Fucking supplier of supplements. Yeah. It's like, no, he's, he's legit now. He's, he's totally gone straight. He's gone straight. Yeah. <laughs> that segment was brought to you by Clan Buterol. I love Ward, though. I know it was all clean, bro, but yeah, yeah it was sure. a little fishy when it first started. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Go to boxingtonight.io. Hey, there you can find hey, links to. Hey, you others. know, you know, uh, what you recall was like, you know, he's been undefeated since he was 14, right? That's me. <laughs> brought to you by Clan yeah. Buterol. When are we going to cycle the kid, Andrew? Like, let's start just... him on a cycle. <laughs> I just diminished everything Ward accomplished since he was 14. <laughs> SOG. You took down the SOG. Um, Andrew, when, when can we start your son? I mean, I've got enough stuff. We can start him on a cycle right now. He's ready. No, I'm, I'm very happy where Junior's at. He's doing good. He just I'm just trying not to get the kid bullied in school. You know what I'm saying? You know what? I would like him to right fight now. Javier Fortuna. 
And then when he wins that match, <laughs> that would be a shocking upset. <laughs> That'll always be his. Because the reason they're talking, the way some of the media outlets, I was looking at the stories. I'm like, what are you talking about? It would be shocking if I beat Javier Fortuna, not if King Rai beat Javier Fortuna. <laughs> like, you guys are on different, but like, uh, like, uh, the way people talk about King Rai is just ridiculous. It, it's just painful to me on some level. Dude hasn't fought anybody. I'll keep saying that, it. Keep Dude saying that, hasn't fought bullshit. anyone. That's bullshit. You keep saying that, and that's bullshit. Lou Campbell was a somebody, and Fortuna last night was a somebody. I'm sorry that he passed both of those fights with flying um, colors. And in both cases, Nothing they were lighter that. fighters coming up to find him. Lou Campbell was not a lighter fire, fighter. No, he no, wasn't. He was just a crappy fighter. No, oh, will you stop? Will you stop? <laughs> he had went 12 rounds with Lomachenko, dude. Come on, man. You're knocking the kid and by the for way, nothing. Uh, have I not made it clear my feelings on Lomachenko that he's nothing but hype and fast hands? Like, oh, okay. So, oh, okay. Just kidding, Let's but, not start the, the debate. We've the been defense. at this for a couple of hours now. <laughs> Everybody take a deep breath. I think I've said enough things here that we're all unhappy. The only question is, are we going with Reynoso Ghost Mel Canelo shit? Actually, Lee, I got to be honest. If Junior did decide to go professional, Victor Conte would be the first man I called. Hell just... yeah! <laughs> Uh, actually, actually, do it the correct way first, right? For the amateurs, you go out to Vegas, and the guy's really, really literally called the blood doctor. He's the guy who does it right, like where they test the blood and find out. A, a lot of UFC people use him. He's very famous in Vegas, and he tests the blood, and he regains um, vitamins and everything that your body's lacking so you're at peak performance. It's done Not legally and ethically, and it's done the correct way. Now, when we're hunting the top ten, Andrew? Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> Conti. <laughs> Hot dial. Boop, 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 boop. I need that milkshake. What yeah. milkshake are we supposed to take at noon and which one at three? I yeah, forgot. You're right. Just send over the, like, it comes like, um, like, what are those? Hello Fresh or whatever those things. Like, it's a box that just shows up at the front door and they're labeled for each day of the week. Jenny Craig, they're the Jenny Fuck Craig yeah. diet. Tell Junior I'll cycle hey, with him. It won't be that hey, bad. It's a, a little sketchy. I'm not going to lie. Canelo. It's a little sketchy. You are a little no, jittery. That's awesome. Uh that segment was brought to you by Clan Buterol. Go to boxingtonight.io. You can find videos. You can follow us on social media. Uh, you can do all kinds of things. You can follow at Fight Fiend Migs on both Instagram and the YouTubes. And I just launched my own vlog, which is where I'm putting up almost all the content I can dig up on any given day of anything we've ever shot. Um, you guys will be appreciative of the Fight Net Radio folder and the Get to Know Your Fight person i think that's what we wound up calling it like what a shitty title um i realized that once i was starting to put video like uh, that doesn't flow off the tongue that that's just not good uh you can find all that mostly we're on facebook almost every single day of the week you can catch all three of us there you can send us messages and let us know please share like subscribe do whatever the hell it is that you do but i am not going to say bff or the word smash <laughs> because i'm too old got it uh, we do appreciate you on behalf of Andrew, Miguel, and myself. We really do appreciate all you fans and sticking with us and enjoying our content.